Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today, let's talk about another brand new Ubiquiti switch in the Pro Max lineup. And that switch is the Pro Max 16 PoE. The Pro Max 16 PoE has 12 gigabit PoE plus ports, four 2.5 PoE plus plus ports, and two 10 gigabit SFP gauges, and comes in at $399 USD, which I think is a very good price. The Pro Max 16 also comes in a non-PoE version and that costs $279 USD. Like any other Pro Max switches, it features ether lighting. If you haven't seen ether lighting, it's RGB right on the switch port. This could be helpful for troubleshooting and is just really cool. Ubiquity offers ether lighting patch cables which work really well with the RGB switch ports and I'll show you when we get it mounted into my rack. The Pro Max 16 PoE could be mounted a few different ways. You could use it as a desktop switch, you could mount it to the wall, or it could be rack mounted. Now if you want to rack mount it, you need to buy the Pro Max 16 rack mount which comes in at $49 USD. Now let's take a closer look at the Pro Max 16 PoE, put the mounting kit together and then get it installed into my network rack. And this is the USW Pro Max 16 PoE. As you could tell on the front, we have our 12 1 gigabit PoE plus ports, and then the last ports are our four 2.5 gigabit per second. These are PoE plus plus. Currently, there's only a few devices that use PoE plus plus in the Ubiquity lineup. The G4 PTZ Industrial, the Unify Access Hubs, as well as the Connect Display. And then on the end, we have our two 10 gigabit SFP plus cages. Now on the back of this, we don't have an internal power supply within this switch. We have an input for an external power supply and that's 210 watts. Not everybody is going to like this, but if you're using the rack mount kit, it does hide pretty well. If we're going to be mounting this to the wall, we need to pop off these slots so that we can put our rack gears in behind the switch. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the tool in and pop it off. Now with the cover plate taken off, we have this little slot on the bottom of the switch so we can push our rack gear in and then line up the hole. Once the hole's lined up, we would put the screw in and this is how we would mount it right onto the back of our wall if we choose. I'm going to be using the rack mount kit, so let's get that open. On the very top, we have this big L bracket that will probably go onto the side of the switch and then it looks like we have another bracket for the rack ear on the side. Comes with all of our mounting accessories and some cage nuts, a bottom plate, which I assume is where the PSU is going to sit on top of, and we have the box for the power supply unit. So this is probably just the top cover for it so that we don't see it. Now I'm going to have to get this installed onto the switch. Now I have the rack mount on and we can see that we have some cable management for our power supply. All we need to do is just wrap around the excess cable around these two little ears. Once we think we have enough, we have another chase way for our cable management and there's a slot down at the back where we're we're going to place the cable and then we can plug it into the switch. Now with our cable management done for our power supply, all we need to do is put the lid on top of it. And there we go. Now we're ready to bring it down to our network rack and get it installed. Now most of you have seen my network rack before and don't judge too much as it's a little messy. Things change all the time here at Mac Telecom Networks. But we're going to put this 16 port switch in the second U as that's open and I'll be using rack studs to mount it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a super long DAC cable. I just have this 0.5 meter DAC cable. So we're gonna have to just kind of cut it across instead of going through my wire management. But that should be fine for now. I will end up taking this switch out and using it as a desk switch. Next, what I'm gonna do before we put the power, I'm gonna move some of these data cables up to the 16 port switch. So we'll start from the left and we'll just take it out of our, my 24 port switch and bring it up to the 16. Then we'll look at the cool ether lighting. Now I have the Pro Max 16 PoE adopted into my network controller. Let's go into the port manager and look at the port settings. Now on the port manager, we could see a bunch of different devices connected. I have a lot of camera stuff. I have my USP RPS, and then I have my PDU as well as other G3 cameras. I also have an access point that's on one of those last four ports, and that means that it's running at 2.5 gigabit per second and these ports do poe plus plus and then on the very end we have my usw pro aggregation switch plugged in 
and that's doing 10 gigabit. Now, if we look over the settings, we have a couple things that we could change within the ether lighting section. So if we want to just be looking at the speed for fast ethernet, it's gonna show us this amber color. For gigabit, it's gonna be white. For 2.5 gigabit, it's gonna be blue. And then for 10 gigabit, it's gonna be white again. We could also look at our different network colors. So you can see my default is blue. Dolores is this purple color. Cameras is red. And then we have this none. We can change the colors of any of these different networks if we click on it and then pick whichever color we like. Now, Ether Lighting has this breathing mode by default. And if you don't like that, they now have this setting to turn it off. So the breathing will completely stop. And we could also change the brightness so if you don't like it at 100 you bring it all the way down to zero now who is the pro max 16 poe for well i think it would be great for small offices that don't have a large wired deployment they just need a few ports for wireless access points a couple cameras and potentially unified door access for up to four doors the switch is fanless which makes it quiet for any working area and i love that all the ports are in one line the only thing I would have liked to see is the power supply being internal instead of external, but that's not the end of the world. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the Unify Pro Max 16 PoE. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.